let's see, I'm, I will start with some announcements. Um, and uh, well, let me just say that. I will start with some announcements. So um, first of all is what's not going on. There is no um, adult ed tonight. Um, I think Dick and Beth are gonna be enjoying an evening without TV, but, or maybe something on PBS, I'm just guessing. <laughs> but uh, not so much the Super Bowl, but there is an underlying assumption that lots of us will be watching the Super Bowl. So we will not be doing adult ed this week. But next week, um, Dick will conclude his series on the Gospel of John, which has been very interesting. Um, so that'll be at seven o'clock next Sunday. And following that, we will begin uh, Lentflix. Um, so uh, I think I have a couple movies identified. I'll let you know when I'm sure, which will be soon. It's possible one of them will be on Hulu, and I'm not sure that everyone has Hulu, but it's a worthwhile watch. Um, and if we get to that, we'll uh, try it with a screen share, and you can watch it on the computer, and hopefully that'll work. And if it doesn't, um, well, we won't try it again. Um, it is the days of COVID, so we'll do everything we can. Um, and it might take some creativity. So um, Ash Wednesday, February 17th, that is a week from this Wednesday, uh, we'll do a Zoom service at seven o'clock. We will do um, the, the regular service from the prayer book, but of course, without ashes or communion. It's still a marvelous liturgy um, to, uh, to pray as we're headed into Lent. So I encourage you to join us for that. Um, the day before Shrove Tuesday, we would normally be doing pancakes and people from all over the area who I don't know, and I don't know if you do, show up for free pancakes. People come out for that, but we can't do that this year, of course. And we can't have the, uh, the yuck, yummy sausage that we usually get. So, sorry, my phone is making an odd sound that I don't recognize. <laughs> uh, I turned it on mute. Anyway, um, oh, so what I'd like you to do, I want you to have pancakes, or at least make them and pretend to have them, and take some pictures and send them in to Pictures at gmail.com. And uh, maybe we can show pictures of us all eating pancakes, because pictures of people eating is always what you're going for. But um, <laughs> you can also just take pictures of your pancakes if you like, but get yourself in the in the picture so we can see you see each other. Um, Beth, Lenten reflections. Um, we are getting them in. They are wonderful. They're a a mix. Um, they're so individual that uh, it's really reflecting who we are at St. Mark's. Don't tell me you can't write a story or reflect on your favorite hymn or Bible verse or a picture of something. Everybody's got something for us and they're, they, they're wonderful. We would like to have as many as possible by the next Sunday so that we're ready to roll starting on um, Ash Wednesday, but um, just keep them coming. I also want to make a plug tonight. I don't know if it will be halftime or not, but at eight o'clock, we will be doing Compline. Um, so all you have to do is go to the Compline box. You don't have to go to the adult ed box. And if you click on that link there, it will bring you to Compline at eight o'clock this evening. Great. Thank you, Beth. Um, just another plug for people who might be willing to work the audiovisual equipment maybe once a month when we get back to the church. Um, Ron and Rich have been doing a great job with it. We'd like to be able to spell them um, so they don't have to do it every Sunday. Um, most of the people involved in church who are there every Sunday get paid to be there. Um, that's, that's me. Um, so uh, I encourage you to think about it. it it's it will be set up. They are doing a, a good job putting down instructions. They'll teach you how to do it. Ron, it's not that hard. Can I say that? Um, with your fingers crossed. No. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's a good advertising piece for. <laughs> All right. Um, and I just always want to make a plug for, as Beth said, Compline every night. Um, 
at nine o'clock, except Sundays when we'll do eight o'clock. Um, and um, uh, also for morning prayer and Bible study on Wednesday mornings, morning prayer starts at nine, Bible study kicks up around 9.30. And if you have never been a part of this group, you are cordially welcome. Just because you have never come in to do Bible study before doesn't mean you wouldn't be welcome to be there on any Wednesday morning. So I encourage that. It's another opportunity to be part of community while we're all separated and also to study the scriptures um, and to reflect on them uh, relative to your own spiritual life. So with that, let us take just a moment uh, to prepare ourselves for worship on this fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life, abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Matt? A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to God. God. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, when Jesus and his disciples had left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit, permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went through Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'll not now turn it into Connie, our preacher this morning. Gracious God, let this candle be a sign that we have asked you to dance and burn and shine in us. Amen. Good morning, St. Mark's community. Good morning, pandemic church shoppers. Are there any of you out there? If so, welcome. I'm Connie Bowman. And I've been an intern here for the past several months, and this is my last day of school. It seems like yesterday when I walked up to the table and was greeted so warmly by Sally and Tim. We were worshiping outdoors then under the big, beautiful oak tree. And as I looked at how many of you showed up to worship, 
all masked up, lugging your lawn chairs and your coffee to go. I will never forget how holy it felt to be there, even with the bikes and the motorcycles whizzing by on 216. I met so many of you that day and wondered how I would ever get to know your names and match them with the top halves of your faces. It was so nice to see familiar faces, June from tennis, Pam and Bill from college, Ron from EFM. I just recall feeling so welcomed, but a little nervous, like it was the first day of school. I was grateful for Kathy Boyer, who reminded me that when you're the lector and wearing a mask and reading glasses, your glasses will fog up. She was right. All you can see is the beginning and ends of sentences. Good times. Sandy took me under her wing and taught me how to properly fold and put away sacred things. I learned so much from Father Taylor, so thank you. Thank you all for welcoming me so graciously into this amazing community. In Mark's gospel, Jesus is modeling for us healthy community. Jesus and the gang arrive at Simon Peter's house to find his mother-in-law sick in bed with a fever. Now, she's really sick. We don't catch her name, so let's just call her Dolores. Jesus sees an immediate need, and despite it being the Sabbath, he takes Dolores' hand, raises her up, and heals her. Dolores, feeling better, begins to serve Jesus and the disciples. Now, the Greek translation of the verb to serve Diakonos, where we get the word deacon, also means to minister, to serve. It's the same service we're all called into at our baptism. Sure, maybe Dolores put out some yummy appetizers, that's just basic hospitality, but upon her restoration to wholeness, she was called into community to serve. In healthy community, if someone isn't thriving, we address it. I've witnessed this here at St. Mark's. You guys genuinely care and look after one another. Next in Mark's gospel, we see Jesus healing and casting out demons in the wider community, working outward in sort of concentric circles. That happened with the Dream Builders Desk Project, right? First they went to students here in Howard County and then quickly they'd spread far and wide, thanks be to God, and Good Morning America. Jesus then slips away from the crowd. The disciples find him praying. He's discerned their next steps. They must go out, proclaim the message of the kingdom, create even bigger circles. Jesus is becoming more widely known. And fame can be positive for sharing the good news of God's kingdom, but fame always has a shadow side. What do you say we play a little Jeopardy? This is Jeopardy. Here are today's contestants, the Congregation of St. Mark's Highland, a charming little Episcopal church in picturesque Howard County, Maryland. The category is Famous Quotes by Women in U.S. History. And here's your clue. She was famous for saying, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. If you said, who is Fannie Lou Hamer? Congratulations, St. Mark's. You win the Daily Double. How did you do? Have you not heard of her? Allow me to shine a little light. Fannie Lou Hamer was a powerful voice in the American Civil Rights Movement. Born in 1917 in Montgomery County, Mississippi, she was the 20th child of poor sharecroppers. She worked the fields probably as soon as she could walk and endured the horrors of crushing racism in the segregated South. Fannie Lou Hamer had a magnetic personality. 
When she spoke, she delivered powerful sermons about freedom and justice that would bring people to tears. And then, in her deep, resonant voice, she would belt, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. It was said that Hamer chose that song because it summarized her life and because every little light can make a difference. In the summer of 1962, Hamer became active with voter registration efforts. As her fame grew, this five foot four inch woman was threatened, arrested, beaten, and shot at. In 1964, Hamer brought the civil rights struggle to the attention of the nation during a televised session of the Democratic <coughs> National Convention. She spoke of being tortured and beaten just for trying to register to vote. She was later praised by Martin Luther King, resulting in the convention voting against any future racially segregated delegations. Hamer served tirelessly to provide childcare, family services, and to increase business opportunities for minorities. In 1977, she died young at age 59. The quote about being sick and tired of being sick and tired is engraved on her gravestone. It must have been exhausting to be Fannie Lou Hamer. But as the prophet Isaiah preaches, God does not faint or grow weary. God's always in our story. Montgomery County, Mississippi was a far cry from Montgomery County, Maryland, where journalist Kay Mills was raised. She went to Bethesda Chevy Chase High School, Penn State, we are, and got her master's in African history from Northwestern. She wrote for the Baltimore Sun and the Los Angeles Times and was a Stanford teaching fellow. Impressive credentials. But let me tell you who impressed Kay Mills. Kay Mills was blown away by Fannie Lou Hamer. She was impressed with her courage and charisma and her impassioned testimony at the Democratic National Convention. The two women finally met in the early 1970s, struck up a friendship, and decided to collaborate on Hamer's biography. No publisher at that time would commit, so the project had to be shelved. But in 1988, after hearing civil rights leader Jesse Jackson publicly praise Hamer, Mills, still convinced that Fannie Lou Hamer's story needed to be told, tried again. Kay Mills got her book published. Guess what the title was? This Little Light of Mine, The Life of Fannie Lou Hamer. It was released in 1993. It was a long time in the making. It took 20 years, but finally Mills was able to bring Hamer's story to wider circles and to shine a light on the demon racism. After its publication, more books about Fannie Lou Hamer were written. Important stories need to be told and retold. Today's story from Mark is retold again in both Matthew and Luke. Heal, cast out demons, spread the message. This gospel is being lived out in Nashville, Tennessee, a couple of years ago, I sat with Episcopal priest Becca Stevens in the bustling Thistle Stop Cafe on Charlotte Avenue in West Nashville. I ordered their organic mixed green salad with beets, pears, cranberries, almonds, and goat cheese. It was topped with perfectly seared grilled salmon. It had this amazing vinaigrette. I sipped a steaming hot mug of their custom tea blend as Becca shared her story. I'll spare you the details, which are pretty unpalatable, but what I will say is that the trauma she survived as a child happened in an unhealthy church community. As part of her healing, Becca was inspired to help women who had been abused, trafficked, and addicted. One woman, let's just call her Dolores, she served me my tea. She was nobody's mother-in-law. After years living on the streets, the community at Thistle Farms encircled her. She was given a place to live, heal, and work. They raised her up. 
and now she serves too, with the biggest, warmest smile you've ever seen. Like your desk project, Thistle Farms has generated some good PR. They're doing a great job of spreading the message that love heals. So are you, St. Mark's. You know that in healthy community, all can flourish. In this time when we are discerning what is really important, what is dispensable, and what is absolutely necessary to our flourishing, it's clear, especially after my time here, that a healthy, loving community is highest on that list. One that puts compassion first, embraces a stranger, that looks for ways to serve God in the greater community. Are you blushing yet? Because I got more. Austin, can you zoom in just a little bit? Not too much, just a little. It's okay, I'm his mother-in-law. Pandemic church shoppers, be forewarned. If you choose St. Mark's Highland as your spiritual home, you will be asked to serve. But you'll also be generously fed. Thank you, St. Mark's, for the warm welcome, for your gracious time and generosity, allowing me the freedom to explore my better late than never kind of call. This community has left a holy, indelible mark on my heart. Amen. Thank you, Connie. Our service will continue at page three in your bulletin with the Nicene Creed. Saying together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Remembering our shared ministry with the Worldwide Anglican Communion, we pray the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, praying especially for the Anglican Church of Burundi. Remembering that we are part of the Episcopal Diocese of Maryland, we pray the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, praying especially for St. Andrew's Lockraven, St. George's Hampstead, St. James Moncton. In the prayers of parish family, we pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Taylor, Abby, and Lisa, and for those celebrating wedding anniversaries. We offer prayers of intercession for Hazel and Beverly, Jenny, Kenny, Judy and Jeff, Penny, Sarah, Lynn, and Hugh and Jen. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for Jorge's completion of his undergraduate studies. And we offer prayers for the repose of the soul of Anthony, Peter, and Julie. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Eugene and Robert, our bishops, for Taylor, our priest, and for Connie, our intern. For this gathering and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. 
I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. I will close the prayers with the a prayer for the whole human family. O oh God, you made us in your image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And continuing at page four, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. I encourage you to offer each other peace in your house, perhaps in the chat box, perhaps unmute yourself and just blow it out to everyone. Peace. Peace, sweetie. Peace, everybody. Peace, Peace everyone. everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace. 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 Peace, everybody. So good to see folks. Peace to all. Peace, everyone. Thank you, Connie, for a great sermon. Yes. Yeah, so. All right, if you would um, mute yourselves again. Getting too close. Um, yes, Connie, thank you for that sermon. Um, thank you for setting the bar really high for the clergy you leave in your wake. Um, it was really lovely. Thank you. Now, as we say... Um, a sad goodbye to you. It's also a hopeful goodbye because you are off to bigger and better things. I hope this, this small path has been helpful. We have a gift for Connie this morning that I would love to push through the screen, but I can't do that. Um, it's probably a good thing because uh, when the variant first hit in England, I do Bible study with a friend from England, and uh, he threatened to... Uh, send it through the screen to us. This is a prayer book. Uh, Connie does not have the prayer book hymnal, which is uh, the one I carry around every week. It's got all the hymnal, everything in it, including the, I mean, the prayer book and everything. And uh, this is our gift to Connie. I have inscribed it uh, with the following. I'll read it to you. It's dated February 7th. It says, Connie, on behalf of the people of St. Mark's, I want to express our joy in having had you with us for your internship these past several months. Your creativity and willingness to serve however needed has been an enormous help to us during this odd time in the life of the church and the world. We pray that your time with us has proven equally beneficial to you. It is also our prayer that you will find clarity in God's call on your life as you more move toward what we assume will be ordained ministry on behalf of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it closes with a uh, quote from the, um, from the service, the ordination of a deacon, which says simply, 
May the Lord, by his grace, uphold you in the service he lays upon you. Amen. So, Connie, I will get this to you, and it is new and fresh, and you'll want to try to keep it that way. Otherwise, you'll get one kind of like this. You can't even see the cross, and it's kind of falling apart. Uh, fortunately, this is not the only one I have. This one uh, came to me in, from a friend in seminary. Uh, February 10, 1994. So this one goes back away. But with that, I will say, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. And the service will continue with the great thanksgiving at page four in your bulletin. This is Eucharistic Prayer C. Um, sometimes affectionately known as the Star Wars prayer because it talks about galaxies and it was it also came out originally in 1976 and you will recall perhaps that Star Wars came out in 1977 so the Star Wars prayer and once again we are saying this is a reminder that we have fallen and God has saved us and that is the story that it tells the Lord be with you and also with you Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Let us give thanks to God for the abundance that God has given to us. Most merciful Father, we humbly thank you for all your gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for life and health and safety, for strength to work and leisure to rest, for all that is beautiful in creation and in human life. But above all, we thank you for our spiritual mercies in Christ Jesus our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now we'll say a prayer for the people during a pandemic. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, 
unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good will work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thank you for joining us. Um, I hope you'll come back next week. More than that, I hope you'll come tonight to Compline and uh, the next night to Compline and the night after that and the one after that. So God bless everyone. Uh, welcome to Coffee Hour.